When studying pharmacology, you might come across these two terms, which are agonist and antagonist. So what exactly are they? So let's say we have a normal cell process where I've drawn out here some receptors on a cell. And let's say this is like a neurotransmitter, dopamine, for example. So normally, dopamine might come here and bind to these receptors and then uh, activate it. And so what an agonist is going to do is essentially act like the same thing. So an agonist is going to essentially, let's say we have a medication that is an agonist, a dopamine agonist, then what it's going to do is also bind to these receptors and then activate it. So it kind of acts similar to a regular dopamine or a regular neurotransmitter or whatever you're dealing with. It's going to act like the same thing and activate it. An agonist is going to activate the receptors just as a normal uh, neurotransmitter would in the, in the same process. Now an antagonist is going to be a little bit different. So what an antagonist does, and you can kind of think of like an antagonist in a storyline, uh, where they're kind of the bad guy going against the um, main character. And so these are going to block um, these receptors. So an antagonist might come to this receptor and essentially block it. So this receptor will stay here. It won't activate it because it, it doesn't have the same shape um, like in this example. Um, but what it's going to do is essentially block these neurotransmitters from then binding. And so if we have a bunch of them, they're going to block all these receptors and then none of these, uh, for example, dopamine can bind. So they're just going to kind of go there, but, you know, you, they can't bind because there's something in the way. And so that's the main difference between agonists and antagonists. Agonists are going to activate these receptors just along with the neurotransmitters, and antagonist is going to block the action of a regular neurotransmitter.